here and welcome. And of course, to all my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. <laughs> if you would like to find me on social media, I am at Zoe Nichols, K-N-I-T-C-H-O-L-S. That's on Instagram and Ravelry. And you can find my hand-dyed yarns on Etsy under the name of Felicity Yarn Studio. So how have y'all been? <laughs> um, on the last episode, I said something about life slowing down, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but it looks like more just kind of unexpectedly got dumped on my plate. <laughs> and that's why it's been about three weeks since I have podcast last. Um, but that's okay. That just means that I have lots to share with you guys today. The first kind of housekeeping or administrative type of topic that we will cover here is that Naomi, who is my sister, um, she is the yarn curator with her own podcast. Um, we, we are running a joint knit along and that is the new year old stash cow. Um, there was some confusion <laughs> about, uh, what official hashtag we are using on Instagram, but I'll put it on the screen. And then we also have a joint Ravelry group, and that is called the Curated Felicity Group. Um, and I think there was supposed to be a chatter thread and a finished object thread, but it looks like everything is all into one. I need to look into that and talk to her. Um, but I think she and I had agreed um, we would each do a prize each for chatter, FO, and Instagram. So that's three schemes or I've pulled three schemes from the shop as prizes. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and show those to you guys. And the first one I have here, this is called Rainbow Reef. Get my tag out of the way. And this is a single ply base. It is 362 yards, 100% superwash merino. And it just has some nice speckles and a really pretty blue. And then um, I have two skeins of my color weight pink nose. This one is also single ply and this one is a fingering weight base that I can't get anymore. Um, so it's kind of like my last one hanging around, but it is an 80-20 blend, 400 yards. Um, and this color way, of course, is inspired by Darcy, who is my gray and white cat and she has a pink nose so when she gets really excited or she's happy and purring a lot it turns really bright pink and her beans are pink too so um, yeah she was one of she was my inspiration for one of my first colorways um, and secondly I am going to be doing a 200 subscriber giveaway at the end of this video so stay tuned if you would like to enter for that I'll show you the prize at the end also um, yeah, so that leads us to finished objects. And I actually have three whole finished objects for y'all today. <laughs> you may have already seen the first one. I uploaded an FO feature video over the weekend, and that was for the Calliope Nest Cowl. And this is a pattern um, by Wool and Pine. That's Selena of Dank Fiber and Abby of Abby Knits. Um, and I won't go into too much detail since I did kind of run through all of that on the other video, but I'll link to that for you guys. Um, it is a pattern that holds a strand of fingering weight and mohair together, and you do this really pretty um, threaded texture stitch on the outside, and then you make a lining and a really pretty contrast color. Um, I used this is Junk Yarn in the colorway Leslie for the main color. And this is Olan in the Mac Kumail. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, that's that colorway. And then I just used some white undyed mohair um, held with both of those to kind of tone them down a little bit. So you can kind of see how that mohair really like brings it down so it's not quite as in your face. Not that I mind in your face. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a really quick, really enjoyable knit. Um, I think I got it done in about two weeks. And if you need any more information, um, again, click that link to see um, my finished object feature there. 
So for my second finished object, I finished my jigsaw puzzle. This is a pattern by Westnets. And let's see here. This is it. Um, it is already quite large. I do think I'm gonna give it a slight blocking just so it's kind of nice and big, like almost blanket size um, to wrap up in on the couch. I'm not gonna run through all of the yarn combinations because I don't think that I could remember them all and we'd be here all day, um, but I have linked all of that on my Ravelry project page. I've listed them all there. And if I haven't, I'll be updating it in the next day or so. Um, I had left this out on my chair in the middle. Oh, I still have an end to weave in for my eye cord bind off. Um, I had left this in the chair while I was in the middle of doing an eye cord bind off because they seem to take forever. It took me about three days of stopping and starting to finish this. Um, and a kitty cat snagged it. So I will have to kind of fiddle with that and get that resolved. Um, but other than that, I am super pleased with the shawl. Again, I look forward to leaving this in my chair and having it um, to wrap around my shoulders. I like to wear like sleeveless tank tops um, most of the summertime in the warmer weather here. Um, Cause when I'm moving around the house, uh, that's what I like to stay cool. Um, but our living room is, um, I guess you could call it a basement. We have a split level house, so it, it stays really cool down there. Um, and in the evenings, if I still have like the sleeveless tank top on, I feel like I need something on my shoulders. So yeah, that is exactly what I knit this for. And I, when I had, when I was looking for yarn for the Calliope cow, I had thought I had potentially wanted to use some of the leftovers from this shawl, um, but nothing really was either enough yardage or didn't quite fade the way I would have wanted it to because that pattern is written to fade as well. Um, so instead, I just have a bunch of leftovers now and partial skeins in these beautiful colors. So I definitely want to make a scrappy sock or some scrappy socks out of these colors. I think they'll be really adorable. And then the rest of the leftovers will go into my Battenberg blanket. So yeah, this is finished object number two. And here I have my third finished object. Um, this seems to be the bag that I keep going to to keep my socks in. Um, this is by Woodsy and Wild. Um, and I did put some pins up there. Uh, one of them is the same pin that I sent to Susie of Elderflower Stitches. And then this is the cat pin that she sent me, which I thought was adorable. And it just kind of matched the aesthetic of this bag. And I have my little <laughs> rose quartz here also. Um, but I finished my stripy socks. So this is the first pair of socks that I have knit toe up for myself. Um, I knit some for Jason and they turned out really well. Apparently I didn't weave in any ends on these either. <laughs> um, but this stitch marker here, which is from Hannah of Corner of Craft, um, that is where I was on the last podcast on both of these. And again, this is a skein of self-striping yarn that I just dyed to see what the process was like for dyeing self-striping yarn. It confirmed what I already suspected and that I do not want to dye self-striping yarn. Um, so, oh, and then the heel and the cuff I used was short search spinners. I'm not sure what the colorway is, but it's this like basic light gray. And I, I pretty much bought this with the intention that it would be for heel, heels, toes, and cuffs <laughs> on multiple pairs of socks. Again, I talked on the last episode about how I was trying out a different stitch count for myself and um, the German short row heel. I was kind of fiddling around with the stitch count on that to see the kind of fit that I would get because I am normally a top down heel flap and gusset knitter. Um, so yeah, one thing I'm not crazy about is the flaring at the top of 
the cuff here. Um, I did a lace bind off, which is one that Naomi says she likes, but it still came out pretty flaring for my taste. I mean, they're socks, nobody's gonna see. I mean, they're just gonna sit in my sock drawer. When they're on, it's not like they're flaring out or anything. When I bind off, I normally like to go up two to three needle sizes, and that usually gives me a loose enough edge without um, any kind of flaring, and it's just super simple. I don't have to remember any special technique for that, um, but I was traveling when I finished these and I didn't have another needle with me, um, so that's why I tried the lace bind off. Um, again, it's not the end of the world. It's a learning curve. Um, the only other thing that I kind of figured out as I was going along is that I should have knit a row even in the gray before I started the ribbing because I did get that like one row of stitches there not or in the stripey color. I don't know why that bothers me, but it just kind of kind of makes me tick a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, yes, this is finished object number three. I guess I could have got my sock blockers out, but they have literally been sitting in that bag since I got home like a week ago. <laughs> so in the meantime, um, clearly I have been on a like whip clear out process um, since the first of the year. I've just been feeling like I had way too many projects going on. Um, now the flip side to finishing all of these projects is I am ready to cast on all of the things, which I will get to. Um, after I talk about what whips I have left here, or that have been getting my attention, I should say. Uh, the main one has been my Advent Shawl, which this is in a bag from Twist Fiber Studios, and I got this one at SAF. Um, I decided I decided a couple of weeks ago that I wanted to go ahead and put some of my pins on my bags. I've always been paranoid that I was going to lose them, but I just made sure they were really secure on there and just kind of check them every once in a while and make sure I'm not losing any pins. Um, but on this bag, I put my You Better Swatch pin and the Maker pin that was sent to me in a swap um, from Facebook, a Facebook group that I'm in. Um, so yeah, I have my Advent Shawl with my shop colors. Um, usually at, after like October, November, I'm kind of sick of looking at these colors because I usually start dyeing Advents around June. Um, so usually after Christmas is when I get the motivation to kind of finish up my Advent projects. So this is the Amber O'Brien pattern, the Adventurer. I don't know. They're all named Ad Adventure or something. Um, of course, I'll put it on the screen for you guys. Um, but I have gotten through one, two, three. This is, I'm now started with color 10 today. And um, if you're not familiar, I did crystals and gemstones as my theme for the advent cal calendar last year. I really enjoyed dyeing that as a theme. Um, some of these do look fairly similar, but they are different once you get up close and really compare these colors. And they look different in the skeins also. Um, let me see if I can remember them. Yeah, The first one was Vertochrysite, then Sunstone, and then Citrine, Strawberry Quartz, Morganite, Rose Quartz, Celestine, Aquamarine, Larimer and I've just started Malachite. So I'm really pleased with how this is looking. I did kind of order them in the calendar so that they would look well like in this kind of stripey pattern or at least to my eye that's how I wanted them to be um, where I thought they looked well together. And I really now that I am revisiting these colors not under the pressure of dying up admin calendars I'm starting to bring some of them back to the shop. So I dyed up a bunch of aquamarine last week and there is that is available on a couple different bases. So you should go and check those out if you're interested. Um, so yeah, the next color I have is Chrysocala um, in my 
ball winder was acting up the other day, so I had to wind it up by hand. Um, and then honestly, I don't remember off the top of my head what comes next, but they are all labeled in the bag there. And yeah, I'm getting through like one color, maybe two colors a day now that I'm sitting down and actually kind of don't really have anything else cast on that's demanding my attention. So this pattern does call for fringe. So that's why I've left the ends kind of long down here. Um, you're supposed to put fringe on both sides. I have another corner of craft stitch marker, my little police box. <laughs> I got one for me and one for Naomi. Um, but as far as the fringe goes, I like the look of fringe and I probably will put fringe on it. But at the same time, I'm a little bit greedy and selfish when it comes to my yarn, especially the stuff that I dye. And I think I can still put a decent amount of fringe on each end um, and then still have enough to make a pair of scrappy socks out of the leftovers. I haven't weighed them once I'm done, you know, with the, the actual knitting part. I probably should, but I'm going to guess there's probably about 10 grams or so left because I think she did design that pattern to work with advent calendars that use 10 gram and 20 grams. So all of my advent calendars come with 20 gram mini skeins and I am not ready to think about <laughs> advent calendars yet, even though I know some people have already started on them. I will probably in the next few weeks or months start thinking about that and probably start getting some work done on them because it always feels like so much work come October, November time. All right, for my final work in progress, this is in my little Misty Mountain Made um, travel bag, and I cast on another vanilla sock. <laughs> I am craving something not vanilla, but for travel purposes, like when Jason's driving and I'm riding in the truck, um, this is really what I reach for, and that's basically the only place that this gets knit on at this point. So, um, I don't know what yarn I'm using because this is just some mystery yarn that I found at a thrift shop when I was with Naomi a few years ago. Um, we had actually just driven her across the country to move from Colorado to Florida and her and I both love antiques and thrifting and old things. So we um, stopped at this shop in Florida once we got her settled and I found this bag of what I'm assuming is either opal or regia sock yarn. Um, it had a couple different colorways in it and I think I've either used them or given them, given the other little bits away. Um, this was kind of the only color that I really enjoyed because I love pink and blue or pink purples and blues. And then I had this mini, which did just kind of matched perfectly that purple. Um, so I think this is a Lorna's, Lorna's Laces um, mini, and I think it's called String Quartet, or it was when I bought it um, off of Jimmy Bean's wool. I want to say this came from when they did a Beauty and the Beast colorway. Uh, they did a full skein and a mini skein set, and I bought both, but I sold the full skein because it was a little too, I don't know, it wasn't quite what I was expecting it to be, but the mini skeins were really pretty and I kept those. Um, so basically, I think I had about 50, like on the nose, 50 grams of this and it wasn't a full skein. So I'm basically going to do the same thing that I did with the leftover um, Mondeem sock that I did in December where I did the cuff and then I'm just going to knit this entire thing into one long tube and then I'll knit a cuff at the other end. I'll split it in half and put toes on and then cut in for an afterthought heel just so I can um, really utilize as much of this yarn as possible and since it's going to be kind of hard to judge like where a heel would go otherwise 
Um, plus, I just don't have to really think too much about what I'm doing. I can just knit this until the yarn is done. So yeah, I'm enjoying this. I knit on it this last weekend when we drove to the next town over. And yeah, that is basically it as far as what I have been knitting on lately. Um, I haven't touched my semi-precious blanket. It's kind of one of those projects that I pull out and I really binge on and then it doesn't get pulled out for two months. Um, I'm still kind of trying to find the perfect border color for that. I think that's really what's holding me up from finishing that project. And then I was going through my list of like my whips that I had at the end of the year and I have knocked out a fair amount of those now. So I'm feeling pretty good about myself um, as far as that goes. So I'm looking to cast on, I have four different sweaters in the back of my mind or garments that I want to start um, sometime soon. Um, the first one I have talked about before and that's the Tsubaki sweater. I think that's how you pronounce it. I did take a year of Japanese in high school. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. So that is what I bought the Brooklyn Tweed for from Black Mountain Yarn Shop. So I did some swatching for my, for that sweater and it is a cabled sweater, but it only gives gauge for stocking it and it doesn't say stocking it in the round or not, but I'm assuming that means in the round. So I did, that's how I did my swatch. Um, and I am, since I have Brooklyn Tweed Shelter instead of Brooklyn Tweed Loft, like I had wanted, um, I am just going to go ahead and use what I have and I figured, I did the calculations and basically I'm just going down a size. So I should still wind up with two inches of positive ease. I'm only off by one stitch on the gauge. So it's not going to make, it's about six inches of difference. So that's why I'm going down a size to do the 46 inch bust to get roughly a 52 inch finished object. So anyway, I did swatch this. I blocked it and everything. I'm being a good knitter. <laughs> and um, the only reason that I haven't started this sweater yet is the construction is um, not a traditional kind of raglan or yoke sweater, even though it is top down. Um, it's apparently written so that you never break the yarn. So it's just not super straightforward. Um, and I just feel like I need to have a couple of days where I really sit down and kind of wrap my brain around how this pattern is supposed to work. Um, and the reason that I have this line here, this was done on, this was done on larger needles. This was done on smaller needles. So anyway, that was my little trick to keep from having to like bind off and then start a whole nother spot. <laughs> and the last kind of thing in progress that I have here is actually a finished object too, I guess. I did finish my spinning. Um, this is the spun right round braid that I was have been working on probably since December. Um, this colorway is called Take a Dip and it is 100% merino. And I'm super pleased with how this came out. It is also going to be for my Dathan sweater. And this is the other um, skein that I have spun up for that. And that was the Rolex that I had from Blue Barn Fiber. And so, like I said, I'm just kind of collecting fiber and things kind of in this kind of family of like seafoam and peach, maybe some neons. I'll pull those out in a second. Um, kind of something with like a beachy sunsetty feel to them. And it, it does call for 15 colors. So I don't need to keep spinning four ounces of each color. Otherwise I'm gonna be left with a lot of leftovers cause it's 15, 25 grams of 15 colors, I believe is what it calls for. I have some smaller amounts of fiber coming from Naomi and then 
we are going to the Carolina Fiber Festival and I'll probably have my eye out for some smaller amounts of fiber um, to go with this as well. So this is the braid. I'm pretty sure I've shown this braid. This came from Spinning Mermaid Fibers. Um, and I'm thinking this will go with it, this color scheme kind of nicely. I also have purchased some other items from um, Spinning Mermaid. Um, so this is going to be jumping the gun on acquisitions a little bit, but this is her colorway lemonade stand and it's just 100% merino. I think she normally includes sparkle in it, but I requested no sparkle because um, I don't, I don't want to wear sparkle in a garment. So then I have that. And what's really interesting is figuring out how, or being able to somewhat predict in your mind how the colors change as you spin them. Like this looks, the spun right round braid looks a lot more uniform all spun up than it did in the braid. So I'm, I'm really curious to see how this works up. I also purchased from her some of these woolly buns and this is in her sweet cloud color. Again, I think it's 100% merino. I just love this color, these colors anyway, the like lavender and pink and like that kind of violet color. So I think actually that these look really well together also. And she included some other little sampley bits that I may also incorporate as well. We'll see. Again, I'm kind of just, you know, spinning what I like. Um, that being said, oh, and I did pull out, this is the first kind of braid or first real skein that I spun. I feel like this is the Polworth Silk from Euphoric Fibers. Um, that I got at SAF. So with some of these other things, I don't know, I'll try to take a picture of them all laid out. Um, I'm not opposed to pulling things out or changing my mind about something. Um, and again, I'm in no rush for this. This is most definitely a process project for me. I'm usually a product motivated knitter, but for this, I'm trying to learn. I'm still a beginning spinner, I feel like, um, even though I do just kind of jump into the deep end most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's the fiber that I bought. I bought the, the braid back in December, but I bought that fiber for my birthday in January. Um, and fiber was not included in my no spend vow, which I learned, which I broke on the last podcast anyway. But um, yeah, so other than that, as far as spinning goes, I, I bought another bag from Spinning Mermaid Fiber. Can you tell that I like her stuff? Um, I'm, I'm probably her biggest fangirl right now. I bought this bat. I want to say I got also got this in January. But this thing is the most gorgeous. It's like almost too pretty to spin. I might have bought this. Be I might have bought this in December actually, because I feel like I've just been staring at it like. I love that neon peach nip in there and that like pale neon yellow. Um, and I'm not a sparkle person as I've stated, but I just had to have this. Um, and I thought originally about including it in the Dathan spin, but with the sparkle, um, I decided not to. Um, this bat, the colorway is You Are Fresh Air and it has Angelina, Blueface Lester, Firestar, Silk Thrums, and Superfine Merino. Um, I feel like this has always just wanted to be a single ply kind of art yarn. So that is what I've been spinning on just as a change of pace from the like fine fingering weight spin that I've been doing for the Dathan. Um, so I actually had to like resist spinning that whole bat <laughs> in one sitting. Um, so I could sit down and record, uh, but it's turning out really beautifully. 
I don't know what I'll make, probably a hat or maybe some mittens, something fun. Um, I have 3.6 ounces of fiber. And like I said, I'm gonna do a single ply just cause I don't know what you would put, I just don't know what you would put with something like that. Um, I don't know, I couldn't envision anything and especially with like the nets and the um, Firestar and the sparkle in there. I'm just gonna let it shine and let it be itself. And I guess while we are talking about acquisitions, um, so two weeks ago, I actually received some really sad news that a friend of mine had passed away and I wanted to attend the funeral. And that was across the state down by the beach. Um, so I drove down there myself and spent a couple days down at the beach. And um, it was a sad time, but it was also a really therapeutic kind of reset for myself. Um, I really miss the beach. I am an ocean soul. I love the mountains, but it just doesn't fulfill me the same way that the beach and the ocean does. Um, so while I was down there, I visited a local yarn shop and that is the Salty Sheep. I have been to them before when we used to go frequently when we lived on that end of the state. And um, they were down at like a waterfront uh, location, um, but there was a pretty bad hurricane about two years ago. And I know that the shop got flooded and um, I was speaking with the owner. She actually said that her home got flooded too. So that was pretty sad, but they have a new location. It's really nice. Um, it seems like they had a little bit more space in there. It's kind of more open and airy. Um, so I did pick up a few things while I was in there. Not a ton. I picked up this skein of Farmer's Daughter fibers in the Eagle Eye colorway. It is squish fingering base. 100% superwash merino. I didn't realize that at the time because I did buy this with the intention of making socks. Um, and, but that's okay. I think it'll be all right. It seems like a fairly high twist. So, um, I don't feel like I normally go for these autumnal colors, but for some reason this color spoke to me while I was there. Naomi says that I do. I guess maybe occasionally, but I don't usually go for this kind of like gold color, but I felt like it would make a really nice pair of socks. And the day that I got this was the day that the first pattern of Helen Stewart's um, Handmade Sock Society pattern was released. So I am going to cast on the Luminate socks with this yarn, um, probably now that I have recorded, because that's basically the only thing that's been keeping me from casting these on. I also picked up, picked up one of the Salty Sheep's enamel pins. So this one will probably go on my like banner that I've, or um, pennant that I've been putting all my pins on. And I also picked up a little mini skein of Emma's yarn in this nice beigey, sandy colorway. It's called Beach Please. So that's cute. Um, that's another, it's that 80-20 mix. Um, I'm not sure what I'll do with this. If nothing else, it'll go in my batten bar blanket. It might be nice to keep for heels, toes, and cuffs on another project. I don't really, I don't necessarily like those together, even though I guess they go. They're different base too. And that was the extent of my yarn store purchases. I think I had a good deal of restraint. Um, there were a couple other skeins of sock yarn that I was really drawn to. Um, but while I was down there at the beach, I did visit the aquarium because um, that's just, again, another kind of place where I really just like to sit and absorb nature and appreciate things. And I feel like you're also supporting a good cause as far as um, you know nature conservation goes. And I had to pick up a little um, pin in the gift shop. So yeah, if you're ever down in the um, Atlantic Beach, Emerald Isle, Pine Knoll Shores area, go check out the aquarium. It's really reasonably priced. Um, they have a lot of really great exhibits down there. 
that is it for all of my yarn shop purchases. Um, again, I said I wasn't going to spend for as long as possible this year and the spending that I have done, I felt like has been really restrained and I have had a purpose for everything that I've bought so far with the exception of the mini scheme, but I mean, come on, it's a mini. Um, so anyway, I realized that I never circled back around to the garments that I want to cast on, um, other than the Tsubaki sweater. Um, I really want to knit the Swallowtail um, sweater or jumper that came out a couple weeks ago. Um, I think it is just absolutely beautiful. And I get a lot of swallowtail butterflies in my yard. So I've also been itching for color work. And um, that was part of why I dyed up a bunch of the aquamarine colorway. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, because I think I want to use that as the main body of my sweater. I have dyed that on for myself on my new base, which is Highland Wool. And um, this is actually the DK weight and that sweater calls for fingering. So I have held back a few skeins of that of um, fingering weight for myself. And I've picked out some of my other gemstone colors that I think I wanna use for that sweater. And then um, the next one that is also color work is Ramblin' Woman by Caitlin Hunter. And that one is DK weight, so that's why I dyed up some DK. So I do want to use aquamarine as one of the colors on that also, um, but kind of a completely different palette than the Swallowtail um, sweater that I have in mind. So I'm itching to cast on both of those. And then finally, I was watching Sandra of the Cherry Heart podcast, and she just finished a Trust Cow. I, I'm guessing that's how you say it. I don't know. And that's by a long avid Anna. And um, I went and I looked at the project page for that and I was like, yeah, I kind of need that in my life also. Um, so I had dyed up this colorway and it didn't really come out the way that I was hoping. Um, it It's part of some yarn that some colorways that I'm working on that are like Outlander inspired. I had wanted this to be an Adso colorway, the cat who's gray with green eyes, but then one of my dyes broke in the dye pot and I wound up with these blue speckles on here and I was like, well, that was unintended. So I kind of want the Truscow top in something like light and silvery like this. Um, again, it's one that you hold mohair with. So we'll see. This is in the back of my mind also. So my future knitting is looking like I'll be casting on my Subaki sweater, possibly the Truscow, probably because that'll be a little bit more mindless. Um, the Swallowtail and Ramblin' Woman, I still need to dye up the rest of the colors for. I'll be working on my Advent shawl. And as I was going through kind of some of my bags of works in progress and th works in progress, um, I noticed my urban jungle hat was still kind of sitting by the wayside. And I think I'm going to be shopping for new yarn for that at the Carolina Fiber Festival. That is in um, about a week and a half. So um, I'm just gonna look for two schemes of DK weight yarn to do something with. You do hold it with mohair, so I may or may not be sh shopping for the mohair with that. And as far as any other shopping at the festival goes, I am allowing myself to shop at the festival. I'm always on the hunt for a skein of self-striping sock yarn and um, that's really it as far as yarn, the DK and self-striping. And then I'll probably be looking for some fiber to spin and they have a used equipment, spinning equipment sale there. I guess they have things other than spinning, like weaving and whatnot. Um, I may be looking for some tools um, to help me with my spinning. Like I don't have anything to card with. Um, I don't still don't have a proper Lazy Kate. Um, 
maybe some extra bobbins because I still only have the three bobbins that my wheel came with. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to some garment knitting and sinking my teeth into like a nice big project. So I'm going to go from finishing up all of my projects to casting on all of the sweaters. So it is what it is. Um, I'm not too fussed about that. And finally, in case anybody was wondering, um, Jason and I did hear back from the insurance adjuster and they have sent us a check for our floors. So we are going to try to do as much of the ripping up of the old floors as possible and then determine if we want to bring somebody in to lay down the new floor. Jason thinks he can do it himself. I have faith that he can do it. I just, I'd rather have it done as quickly as possible personally. Um, but yeah, we are tackling that room pretty heavily. So that's where kind of a lot of my free time is gone. I haven't gotten as much dining done as I would like because I'm trying to do work during the day at on the house while he's at work and then he can come home and we can kind of get a little bit done in the evenings, but it's pretty exhausting. I guess that leads us to the 200 subscriber giveaway. So first of all, just a giant thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. I love watching this little community grow. Um, every comment and like means the world to me. I am so grateful to you guys. So for the giveaway, I have this skein um, also in my single ply base. This is in the colorway Ultraviolet. And it is just that, a beautiful tonal ultraviolet. And I also picked up your very own skein of the Beach Please colorway from Emma's Yarn. So um, I'll probably also include some stitch markers or some other little goodies that I find um, in the package, but this is the main giveaway prize here. And to enter, um, first of all, please be a subscriber, um, but also just drop a comment down below and tell me what you're knitting on. Um, I'm always curious to hear what other people are working on and kind of, or if you're not really working on something, maybe just tell me what pattern has caught your eye recently. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like I get blinders on when I look at Ravelry or things like that. I kind of look at the same projects over and over. So I like to see what other suggestions people have out there. And I will draw a winner um, from the comment section um, before the next podcast. So I like to tr record every two weeks. Um, it's been about three weeks since my last one. Um, so yeah, check back in about two weeks. Um, I'll announce it on the podcast. And then um, that is about it. So if you haven't already subscribed, you should go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> um, like this video, comment. Again, I really appreciate it, you guys. And thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again soon.